and today we will discuss lipid metabolism now this lipid metabolism includes two processes one of them is lipogenesis which means generation or formation of lipids and the other one is lipolysis which means breakdown of lipids now as we know that lipids are usually made up of fatty acid and glycerol so what is going to happen during lipo uh, lipogenesis is fatty acid and glycerol are going to combine to form lipids but in lipolysis different types of lipid are going to break down into fatty acids and glycerol done now we know that fatty acids are of different kinds and they can be saturated which means no double bonds or unsaturated and in our body the source of fatty acid is one is through diet one is source of fatty acid is via diet and the second source of fatty acid is biosynthesis so our cells in our body which cells hepatocytes and adipocytes these two different types of cells are capable of performing biosynthesis दो सोर्स हैं फैटी एसिड एक तो डाइट हो गया और ये बायोसिंथेसिस एंड हेलाटोसाइट्स एंड एडिपोसाइट्स एंड नेक्स्ट रॉ मटेरियल फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ लिपिड इज ग्लिसरॉल सो ग्लिसरॉल वी यूजुअली गेट बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस इट इज एन इंटरमीडिएट व्हिच इज फॉर्म्ड ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लाइकोलाइसिस नाउ first we are going to study lipogenesis in which we will see how lipids are formed from fatty acids and glycerol let's talk about this now lipogenesis in lipogenesis uh, fatty acids will be formed there will be synthesis of fatty acids using these fatty acids and glycerol monoacyl glycerols will be formed then one more fatty acid if one more fatty acid is attached it will form diacyl glycerols and if one more fatty acid is attached it will form try acyl glycerol try acyl glycerol now using the try acyl glycerols which are formed we can uh, derive many we can derive many uh, lipid conjugates they can be hormones or glycolipids or lipoproteins etc the first thing that we are going to do is see how fatty acids are synthesized and in the previous slide i told you that 
fatty acids or lipogenesis is going to occur in which cells hepatocytes and adipocytes or in we come in the cytoplasm of these two cells in animals okay now for the synthesis of uh, fatty acids we need uh, raw material the raw material for the synthesis of fatty acid is acetyl coenzyme A which is also CH3 CH3 COS coenzyme A now this acetyl coenzyme A is converted into malonyl coenzyme A. Now this malonyl coenzyme A is C double bond CH2 C double bond O double bond O on negative and S coenzyme A. But this conversion does not occur directly. It requires ATP and two enzymes. And those two enzymes are first one is biotin decarboxylase along with the coenzyme manganese and trans carboxylase. these two enzymes along with ATP they are going to help in the conversion of acetyl coenzyme A into malonyl coenzyme A but this conversion is not direct what I mean is that acetyl coenzyme A is not present in the cytoplasm but it is present in the mitochondria of the cell and that too where in the matrix of mitochondria so now what we have to do is we have to transfer this acetyl coenzyme to a cassette first it is going to cross this inner mitochondrial membrane then it is going to cross the outer mitochondrial membrane then it will enter the cytoplasm the cytoplasm may the enzymes present here these enzymes will help in conversion of acetyl coenzyme A into malonyl coenzyme A now let's see how this acetyl coenzyme A is shuttled out of the mitochondrial matrix into the cytoplasm We've said that acetyl coenzyme A is present here. Where? In the mitochondrial matrix. Then there was a membrane. In a mitochondrial membrane and one outer mitochondrial membrane and then there was cytoplasm this is outer mitochondrial membrane this one is inner mitochondrial membrane this is intermembrane space and this is cytoplasm now we have to transport this acetyl coenzyme A into the cytoplasm this acetyl coenzyme A will not directly cross these two membranes so there have to be a few transporters that are going to be present in this mitochondrial 
membrane. So the first transporter that is present here is citrate transporter. The second transporter this which is present is malate transporter. And the third transporter which is present here is pyruvate transporter. Pyruvate transporter. So, what will happen now? This acetyl coenzyme A will be converted into citrate when it combines with oxaloacetate. When it is going to combine along with the oxaloacetate, coenzyme A will be released. Now this will, both of them will be converted into citrate. Now this will transport to the cytoplasm via this citrate transporter. So now we can see that citrate is present in the cytoplasm. Now this citrate again will be converted into oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A. Here we have coenzyme ka se aaya? E coenzyme saath saath mein iske saath uh, reaction ke saath aa jata aur acetyl coenzyme A is then released. Now this oxaloacetate is further converted into malate because oxaloacetate cannot transfer back into the mitochondrial matrix. Why? Because there is no transporter which is specific to oxaloacetate present. Now this malate can either enter the mitochondrial matrix via the malate transporter or this malate can be converted into pyruvate and then this pyruvate can enter by the pyruvate transporter into the mitochondrial matrix and then this pyruvate and malate can again be utilized for formation of oxaloacetate. So this is how the Acetyl coenzyme A is transported from the mitochondrial matrix into the cytoplasm with the help of transporters which are present in the inner mitochondrial matrix. So, now we have Acetyl coenzyme A now is present in the matrix or in the cytoplasm. So, now acetyl coenzyme A. Will be converted into malonyl coenzyme A with the help of biotin carboxylase and Mn plus 2 and a second enzyme called trans carboxylase along with ATP. Okay, so again I'll draw the structure. It is CH. 3C double bond O S E O A. This is thiester bond. This is acetyl coenzyme A and malonyl coenzyme A is C C C double bond O double bond O C H2 negative and S C O A, which is coenzyme. Now we have the raw materials for production of fatty acids. In the fatty acid production, 
is going to be carried out by an enzyme called fatty acid synthase. Fatty acid synthase. This enzyme fatty called fatty acid synthase is going to help in elongation of fatty acid chain because we know the shortest fatty acid is 12 carbon it can go up to 20 carbon so first initially a 4 carbon compound will be formed from this 2 carbon compound will be added and 6 carbon fatty acid will be formed then again 2 will be added then 8 then 10 then 12 up to whatever the requirement of the cell is so now this fatty acid synthase is going to help in the second step which is elongation of fatty acid chain the first step was formation of malonyl enzyme A second step is elongation of chain done